Local anesthesia, the discovery in the late 1800s of a group of chemicals with the ability to prevent pain without inducing loss of consciousness was a major step in the advancement of the medical and dental professions. Local anesthesia has been defined as loss of sensation in a circumscribed area of the body caused by depression of excitation in nerve endings or inhibition of the conduction process in peripheral nerves. An important feature of local anesthesia is that it produces this loss of sensation without inducing loss of consciousness. Taking a brief look at the historical background, cocaine was the first local anesthetic agent isolated by Neiman in 1860 from the leaves of the coca tree. Its anesthetic action was demonstrated by Carl Kohler in 1884. First effective and widely used synthetic local anesthetic, procaine, was produced by Einhorn in 1905. Lidocaine, which is the most widely used local anesthetic agent in today's era, was introduced by Lofgren in 1948. To better understand the action of local anesthetics, let's first get ourselves acquainted with the fundamentals of nerve conduction. The neuron or nerve cell is the structure unit of the nervous system. It is able to transmit messages between the CNS, that is the central nervous system, and all parts of the body. A neuron is made up of basically three parts. The peripheral process, which is also known as the dendritic zone, it is composed of an arborization of free nerve endings. The axon is a long cylinder of neural cytoplasm encased in a thin sheath, the nerve membrane or axolemma. And the third part is the cell body. Near its termination, the axon branches with each branch ending as a bulbous axon terminal or bouton. The axoplasm or gelatinous substance is separated from extracellular fluids by a continuous nerve membrane. In some nerves, this membrane is itself covered by an insulating lipid-rich layer of myelin. The nerve cell membrane is approximately 70 to 80 angstrom thick. In vertebrates, myelinated nerve fibers include all but the smallest of axons. Constrictions are located at regular intervals approximately every 0.5 to 3 millimeters. These nodes of Ranvier form a gap between two adjoining Schoen cells and their myelin spirals. The nerve cell membrane is a flexible non-stretchable structure consisting of two layers of lipid molecules that is a bilipid layer of phospholipids and associated proteins, lipids, carbohydrates. The lipids are oriented with their hydrophilic polar ends facing the outer surface and their hydrophobic non-polar ends projecting to the middle of the membrane. The function of a nerve is to carry messages from one part of the body to another. These messages in the form of electrical action potentials are called impulses. So how are these impulses conducted throughout the nerve? It basically depends on two important factors which are the concentrations of electrolytes in the exoplasm which is the interior of the nerve cell and the extracellular fluids and the second factor being the permeability of the nerve membrane to sodium and potassium ions. A nerve possesses a resting potential. This is a negative electrical potential of minus 70 millivolt that exists across the nerve membrane produced by different concentrations of ions on either side of the membrane. The interior of the nerve is negative relative to the exterior. The concentration of potassium in the intracellular fluid is in the range of 110 to 170 milliequivalent per liter, whereas the concentration of sodium in the extracellular fluid is 140 milliequivalent per liter. These ionic gradients differ because the nerve membrane exhibits selective permeability. In its resting state, the nerve membrane is slightly permeable to sodium ions, freely permeable to potassium ions, and freely permeable to chloride ions. Potassium remains within the exoplasm because the negative charge of the nerve membrane restrains the positively charged ions by electrostatic attraction. Sodium migrates inwardly because both the concentration, which is greater outside, and the electrostatic gradient, that is positive ion attracted by negative intracellular potential, both these factors favor such migration. A stimulus excites the nerve, leading to an initial phase of slow depolarization. 
the electrical potential within the nerve becomes slightly less negative. A decrease in negative transmembrane potential of 15 millivolt, like for example minus 70 to minus 55 millivolt, is necessary to reach the firing threshold. In a normal nerve, the firing threshold remains constant. Exposure of the nerve to a local anesthetic raises its firing threshold. When the firing threshold is reached, membrane permeability to sodium increases dramatically and sodium ions rapidly enter the exoplasm. During depolarization, a major portion of ionic sodium channels are found in their open, that is O state, thus permitting the rapid influx of sodium. When the falling electric potential reaches a critical level, an extremely rapid phase of depolarization results. This phase of rapid depolarization results in a reversal of the electrical potential across the nerve membrane. The interior of the nerve is now electrically positive in relation to the exterior. An electrical potential of plus 40 millivolt exists inside the nerve cell. When the firing threshold is reached, membrane permeability to sodium increases dramatically and sodium ions rapidly enter the exoplasm. The entire depolarization process requires approximately 0.3 milliseconds. Now, the movement of sodium ions into the cell during depolarization is passive, that is, it does not require the expenditure of energy because each ion moves along its concentration gradient, that is, from higher to lower. After the steps of depolarization, repolarization occurs. The electrical potential gradually becomes more negative inside the nerve cell relative to outside until the original resting potential of minus 70 millivolt is again achieved. There is a slower decline into a state of inactivation of the sodium channels to a non-conducting state. Inactivation temporarily converts the channels to a state from which they cannot open in response to depolarization, that is, they reach the absolute refractory period. This inactivated state is slowly converted back, so most channels are found in their closed resting form when the membrane has been repolarized. This process of repolarization takes about 0.7 millisecond. After the return of the membrane potential to its original level, that is minus 70 millivolt, a slight excess of sodium exists within the nerve cell along with a slight excess of potassium extracellularly. A period of metabolic activity then begins in which active transfer of sodium ions out of the cell occurs via the sodium pump. Now all these electrophysiological changes in nerve conduction occur in one direction only. That is, the impulse can move forward only as retrograde propagation is prevented by inexcitable or refractory membrane. The stimulus disrupts the resting equilibrium of the nerve membrane. The transmembrane potential is reversed momentarily with the interior of the cell changing from negative to positive and the exterior changing from positive to negative. This new electrical equilibrium in this segment of nerve produces local currents that begin to flow between that depolarized segment and the adjacent resting area. These local currents flow from positive to negative extending for several millimeters along the nerve membrane. As a result of this current flow, the interior of the adjacent area becomes less negative and its exterior becomes less positive. When transmembrane potential decreases approaching the firing threshold for depolarization, rapid depolarization occurs. The newly depolarized segment sets up local currents in adjacent resting membrane and the entire process starts anew. So the previously depolarized segment is on the road back to repolarization, leaving it refractory. Okay, now let's compare nerve conduction in the two types of nerves, which are non-myelinated and myelinated nerves. In small unmyelinated nerves, the density of sodium channels is about 35 per micrometer, whereas at the nodes of Ranvier in myelinated fibers, it may be as high as 20,000 per microns. The only site at which molecules of a local anesthetic have access to the nerve membrane is at the nodes of Ranvier where sodium channels are found in abundance. So in non-myelinated axons, the impulse moves forward by sequential depolarization of short adjoining membrane segments. Whereas depolarization in myelinated axons on the other hand is discontinuous, the impulse leaps forward from node to node. So you can see that in case of a myelinated nerve fiber, the impulse travels farther ahead after two depolarization sequences.
A minimum of perhaps 8 to 10 millimeters of nerve must be covered by anesthetic solution to ensure thorough blockade, which would cover about 2 to 3 nodes of ranvier. The conduction rate in unmyelinated C fibers is 1.2 meter per second, which is about 14.8 to 120 meter per second in myelinated A delta and A alpha fibers. Alright, so how and where local anesthetics alter the processes of impulse generation and transmission? It is possible for local anesthetics to interfere with the excitation process in a nerve membrane in one or more of the following ways, which are altering the basic resting potential of the nerve membrane, altering the threshold potential, that is the firing level, decreasing the rate of depolarization, and prolonging the rate of repolarization. The specific receptor theory is considered to be the most favorable theory today which explains the mechanism of action of local anesthetics. So based on the ability to react with specific receptor sites in sodium channel, local anesthetics can be classified into four categories. Class 1, which are the agents acting at receptor site on the external surface of nerve membrane, like for example biotoxins such as tetrodoxin and saxitoxin. Class B, agents acting at receptor site on internal surface of nerve membrane, like for example, quaternary ammonium analogs of lidocaine or scorpion venom. Class C, agents acting by a receptor independent physiochemical mechanism, like for example, benzocaine. And Class D, agents acting by combination of receptor and receptor independent mechanisms, which involve the most clinically useful local anesthetic agents such as Articane, Bupivacaine, Lidocaine, Mepivacaine, Trilocaine. So let's focus on Class D. It includes tertiary amine local anesthetics, which inhibit the influx of sodium during nerve conduction by binding to a receptor within the sodium channel. This blocks the normal activation mechanism, that is the O-gate configuration, hence the state of depolarization, and also promotes movement of the activation and inactivation gates. So there are calcium ions which exist in bound form within the cell membrane and these are thought to exert a regulatory effect on the movement of sodium ions across the nerve membrane. So the sequence of conduction blockade proposed is displacement of calcium ions from the sodium channel receptor site which permits binding of the local anesthetic molecule to this receptor site which produces blockade of the sodium channel and the decrease in sodium conductance which leads to depression of the rate of electrical depolarization and failure to achieve the threshold potential level along with the lack of development of propagated action potentials which is called conduction blockade. Nerve block produced by local anesthetics is called a non-depolarizing nerve block. An impulse that arrives at a blocked nerve segment is stopped because it is unable to release the energy necessary for its continued propagation. A few other relevant theories which were proposed in the past are the acetylcholine theory, calcium displacement theory, surface charge repulsion theory, membrane expansion theory. So this was about nerve conduction and the mechanism of action of local anesthetics and related theories. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.